So Eric and uh, Rassi, it's a pleasure to welcome you here to Penn State. Rassi, a second time for you. Yeah. Back to beautiful central Pennsylvania. And Eric, for your first time here, thank you so much for taking time of your tour of the United States. And I know that you're both involved in a transformation uh, exercise in South Africa. And I wonder if you can just tell us a little bit about what that means and maybe what the hopes are for that transformation process. I think, Eric, you, you're the a product project Good. manager, so you Good. might be in the best position to... Let us start. Um, the university is going through um, substantial change as an entity. And leading from that is also looking into the teaching and learning um, changes. And then um, it came at, at a good time to do a new strategy or a revised strategy for teaching and learning. And this then led to a project um, called the Transformation of Teaching and Learning. And we're just at the end of our phase one. And I know that your, uh, your hopes you shared earlier with me is the fact that as your institutions have come together and, and through this change of the last, let's just say, 20 years of the change, that it's been, things have been done differently. And now this is an opportunity to come together and create some common practices and some common language and some common understanding about how to improve education. Is that? That would I say, Eric, would be the main focus of, and the main outcome of this whole transformation process. If, if we are able to achieve, yeah. like for example, a common understanding, mm -hmm. that would be the first price. Yeah. Because we all need, because of the different views that we had in the past, we all need a common understanding to take this, this whole transformation forward and in fact, to create the impetus, the mm -hmm. energy behind mm -hmm. uh, this change to make it meaningful. So, you know, I, was, I, I wanted to ask you earlier too, so it's a good time to ask you, is what, is there an innovation or is there a, uh, an energy source, if you will, that could serve as the foundation for this transformation? Is there one thing that might be that impetus or is it several different things? In my view, the, 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 whole, the whole idea, the whole drive, you might call it something different in the U.S. And in South Africa, I believe the, the term that we still focus on is online education, going online, in fact, I believe will be the main game changer within the next 10, 15 odd years. And there are a number of challenges. Why I say this, there's a number of challenges that would, that would make me give this answer. But I mean the, the, the fact that, that we, are, we, we can't provide access to the people that we need to train to be the, f the, f the future innovators in South Africa. So it's access, it's preparing. We, we need to prepare people well to give them the skill to function optimally in this changing, constantly changing environment driven by technology change and then management. I think the whole question about managing well, um, managing on behalf of, for example, the people in South Africa so that all of us will have a better future. So therefore, I believe online, online education and the whole idea behind it, everything coming with it. So um, within online education, because of the environment that we have in South Africa, and in Africa, uh, I believe the uh, mobile learning and uh, the technologies being afforded to us, us through the innovations that are currently taking place in the mobile learning environment. That would be the main challenge because we, this is a challenge to, to everyone that embarks with, uh, well, busy with learning. And, but also the biggest opportunity. So it's the, the way you describe it, that, that access to the mobile environment is the foundation upon which you can begin building this infrastructure for change because you can now get to individuals on a mobile phone exactly. or a mobile device. As you say, you call it, uh, in some cases, training that may be a bit more vocationally yeah. oriented, but also access to higher education. Exactly. The people who prior wouldn't have any access exactly. to that. Exactly. So as you, as you look forward to that path, what do you see as one of the biggest challenges? What do you have to overcome in order to realize that kind of a vision? Is it, because um, you spoke earlier that uh, pre, uh, mobile um, 
penetration is pretty good. You've good. got good. So the technology sounds like it's there. Is it access to the funds? Is is the money a challenge, or is it? Is there another? Or you said preparation of your learners. Yeah, exactly. Which yeah. I think um, <clears throat> budget is always a problem, mm. especially in higher education. But I also believe that the process of um, of change in the Northwest University at the moment, the one to get to a unitary understanding of the environment is also very important because you need to put the people into a space where they understand how to move to mobile or online and so forth. And because of the disparate organization we had um, and the transformation project that we're embarking on at the moment where we have, we call it life cycles, um, the student life cycle, the, the um, governance life cycle, I see, it says Pro me, program qualification, program, the qualification, and uh, the lecturer, lecture. um, to get the people to understand a common language around those things. Um, that when you move into innovative thinking and uh, new ideas, that we all have the same um, the, the, the same page that we look at in terms of progressing. So in the short term, although the long term might be um, the mobile and the that, I think there's work to be done to get coherence around what we have. Interesting. So just getting, as you say, getting everybody on the same page, understanding, yeah. understanding the technologies, understanding the innovations, yes. understanding where and how they can be applied, and then coming up with a shared plan where people, yes. everyone's pointed yeah, in yeah. the same because direction. Because it's expensive. Um, yeah. And I mean, you don't want, you know, pay a lot of school, school money in terms of mistakes. Mm -hmm. So if, if you can get people to, as you rightly say, think in the same direction, mm -hmm. um, have the same view of the, the truth and of the vision, then you might also spend a little, little, little less. Mm -hmm. And you're not chasing yes. multiple different solutions, exactly. you're yes. all in line. So um, projecting forward, let's say five years, ten years, what do you envision an a educational experience like for a student in South Africa? What, what can you see the way that they would operate and move between their education? What does that look like to you? Uh, the, the, the challenge here, Larry, is, is the, the government stated, public statement, that by 2030 they want 1.5 million students in higher ed in South Africa. So, wow. at, as, as at this moment, as we're sitting here, we're still about 800,000 short, which means that we have about 14 years to get the, the other odd sure. uh, six, seven hundred thousand students into the system. Sure. So, um, mm. This is the real challenge that I think that will have to that will need to guide our thinking sure. in terms of the direction. Well, at least it gives you a, a metric. Exactly. You know, it gives you a goal to go after. So, so maybe in your situation, the mobile learning, online learning, sometimes called e-learning, is going to be a vehicle Definitely. to help you penetrate Definitely. those Definitely. numbers. Yeah. And bring, bring the infrastructure out. at the moment can't can't accommodate. Uh -huh those numbers. So right. I, I think, you know, it's, it's a must it's a that must. we need to look into e-learning, online learning, yeah. um, to accommodate the numbers that Rossi just mentioned. Right. And I know that you're also very involved in looking at uh, open educational resources as a part of the solution. Yeah. That's a great innovation. Well, we will have to do it because at the moment the cost of, of providing education is, I mean, uh, it's, prohibitive. It's, it's prohibitive. Yeah. So if it's possible, and this is why Larry, we are we are at Penn State, mm. and this is why we are we want, we need to collaborate sure. with with the people that are running the OER repositories in the world, yeah. because why why would we try to reinvent the wheel? Right. Because the, the everything is already there. We just have to contextualize. So this is also a, also also be a challenge, mm. because uh, and uh, I mean this is a oh another topic that we can discuss, but. Um, a part of this drive to get the students into the system is a demand from the student side that they don't want to be colonized oh, by the Western way of teaching. Sure. We, the drive should include, must include, the whole thing of decolonizing the sure. way that we've taught in the past. So this is part of the challenge then 
interest. And this is why we need, why we, why we want to collaborate with, with people like uh, you guys at Penn State or with the Merlo repository. Because sure. we need to take what you guys have. You've done a lot of good thinking. Sure. You've been innovative in terms of methodology and technology. How do we contextualize that and bring that into our environment so that we support these, this big number of students that will have to get into the system in such a way that it's really, for them, it will be meaning, training them in, sure. in a meaningful way sure. to participate in our environment, yeah. in our economy, right. preparing them in the right. Uh, in the right way. So I, I think you have uh, you have great challenges, but I like to see also great opportunities, and oh, well, I, exactly. I'm very hopeful for your for your initiative. And I and I know that with leaders like you who are thinking about and dedicated to serving your students, I know you'll get there. So best wishes, and again, thank, thank you, very you much. My, my pleasure. Thank you for having us. you with Let us. Let me do it the thank way you. we do it there. Uh, <laughs> this there is a go. sign of truth. Let me, you have to be quick with this. Sorry. This, this, yeah. this uh, very good. Sign of true friendship, Larry. Thank you. My, my <laughs> pleasure. Thank you.